Hey kids, Tavia Router here. It's time for some more Minecraft science. I'm in my world of science where I did all of my tests on minecarts and I've added a bunch of tests to demonstrate the behavior of pistons. Uh, pistons are surprisingly complex because they can interact with literally every other block type in the game in some respect. So I had to put together a lot of tests and there was a lot of behavior to explain. Now what I'm going to be demonstrating is just what pistons do, how they behave in the most fundamental levels. I'm not going to be showing off a lot of piston constructions, so I'm saving those for some later videos. So let's jump right in because there's a lot to show. First of all, what can and can't pistons push? Uh, some of the ones are fairly well known, like for instance, 13 blocks in a row, pistons can't push that, uh, and they can't push obsidian, uh, but there are a lot of possibilities, so I've separated them into three groups. Everything along here is stuff that pistons can't push, and then this left aisle is things that pistons can push, and then this aisle is things that pistons will destroy when they try to push them. So, to do the test really quickly, we just throw the lever, and it tries to extend all of the pistons, including those ones there. Then we throw the lever back again, and all those retract. Now, uh, the things that pistons can't push, signs, unfortunately, portal sections, jukeboxes, furnaces, chests, dungeon spawners, obsidian, note blocks, dispensers, bedrock. Uh, as I said earlier, 13 blocks in a row. And here's an interesting one. Uh, pistons cannot push other extended pistons, either the end or the base. So um, keep those in mind if you want to try and make a self-assembling house or something like that. Don't use any of these blocks. Um, now, I'm not going to list every single one of the other block types. I'm just going to run down here and show you some interesting things. When blocks are destroyed, Usually, it's as if you had just knocked them with your hand. So I was able to pick up those saplings. Uh, this is water and lava source blocks were completely destroyed. Um, there were some flowers here. Mushrooms are gone. Uh, fire was completely destroyed. Ladders. Uh, unfortunately, just about everything having to do with redstone is destroyed. You can't push around levers, pressure plates, redstone torches, buttons, those kinds of things. Uh, I cheated a little bit in order to be able to push cactus, but if you push cactus, it is destroyed. Uh, doors are now destroyed. That avoids a serious bug that Minecraft used to have. Uh, and here, this is flowing water and flowing lava. Those were destroyed, but they were recreated by the source blocks next to them, so there's not much to see here at the moment. Now, among things that can be pushed, there's only one uh, dynamic block. There's only one really interesting one like this, and that's hatches. You can push those successfully with... Uh, pistons as long as you push them to a valid place. We'll hear more about why that's the case in a little bit. Uh, ice can now be can be pushed safely. The bug that was related to that has now been fixed. Uh, Minecart tracks can be pushed. Now, I love this. This has a lot of potential for destruction. You can push TNT safely as long as you don't have the redstone line also accidentally triggering the TNT. You can push it around. Great for mischief. Uh, this Retracted piston was pushed just fine. Also, the non-sticky version can be pushed, and more types of rail can be pushed just fine. And all the regular block types can be pushed. So, if you want to see the complete list, check the description of this video. You'll see every single block type that can be pushed or destroyed or can't be pushed. Uh, moving on, we have uh, some cases where blocks have to be on a particular other type of block. So cactus has to be on sand, crops have to be on tilled uh, earth, and so on. So what happens if we push the sand out, but we push in another block of sand? Well, in that case, it's safe. You can do that, and the cactus is not affected by it. If we use this sticky piston to pull the sand out, that does destroy the cactus. You can't have floating cactus blocks. Similarly, if you have sand and you push not sand but dirt underneath it, what do you think will happen? Well, Minecraft does notice, and it destroys the cactus again because cactus can't be on dirt. Now, these last two are, I think, the most exciting features of pistons. Here, we show how pistons can interact with redstone. We have a lever and another lever. These are both powered, powering these redstone repeaters. That's just going to stay that way for the test. And then we have a block here, and that block being between these two redstone repeaters completes the connection. So this repeater is powered, and this one is not. When I throw this lever, it breaks the connection on the first line and connects the second line. So you can do some really interesting things with that. That's great for logic circuits, flip-flops, and things like that. Uh, and you'll see more of that, and I'm going to have to put a lot of new stuff into my world of redstone. Uh, 
But there's another way that a block can affect redstone. There, it's completing a connection. Here, whenever you have redstone that goes up a slope like this, up one block, if there is a block here, like so, that actually breaks the connection between those two bits of redstone. So what I have here is this lever will power this redstone, which will jump up this slope and come around here and power the piston. That extends the piston and pushes this dirt block, but that will break the connection, which makes the piston retract, and so you end up with this cycle. It's a piston engine. Now, this works pretty well. It's very, very fast. I haven't played with it too much yet to see why this redstone isn't even flickering, but um, it works pretty well. But sometimes when you turn it off, let me get it just right. Wow, not having the luck. There we go. <laughs> I don't know why that took so many tries, but sometimes, and usually it's about 50% of the time, and just really unlucky this time, it leaves the block behind. Somehow the piston and the block get separated. This is just an unfortunate thing. So you now you can't get the piston engine going again unless you have some other signal, like another lever, to reattach the two, and then you can start the piston engine again. So it's kind of neat, also kind of broken. We'll see other creations that can do similar things in the future, though, I'm sure. Okay, moving on. This is a set of tests to figure out how quickly pistons can make and break connections. So I have this little timing experiment that uh, it extends this piston to make this connection, which leads to a note block, which would make the note block sound. But at the same time, it suppresses this torch and passes through this redstone repeater, which unpowers the note block. Now, one interesting thing is if the power to a note block is dropped at the same time as another set of power uh, is connected, so if this becomes unpowered at the same instant that this becomes powered, the note block does not sound. So when I step on this uh, pressure plate, well, let me turn up the volume first. No note sounded. You didn't see a little note floating up. Now when I step off, the note's going to play, but let's ignore that for now. So what this implies is that at the exact same moment that this went off, this went on. That means that this piston took the same amount of time as this signal. So this is one tick, and this is another tick. That implies that a, a piston can complete a connection when extending in two ticks. Now if we, to, to convince you that it really is that way, if we remove the delay there, the note does sound. So we have to have the delay here. So that implies that um, it is a, exactly a two tick uh, time for this to extend and make the connection. Now here's where things get weird. Um, this is a similar test, except now I'm retracting the piston and breaking the connection. So right now it's connected to the note block. And on the other side, we just have one inverter. And again, only worry about when I step on the pressure plate. No note. It does play when I step off, but so that implies again these two sides are taking the same amount of time. So on this side we have one tick, but over here we have a redstone repeater. This is one tick. That implies that this piston is actually breaking the connection in zero ticks. It's instantaneous. So if I remove this redstone repeater so that it updates at the exact same time, the note block does play, so you have to have this redstone repeater here to introduce the right amount of delay. So pistons can break connections instantly? That's really interesting. We may be able to do some really neat things to extend signal lines very quickly instead of having to use redstone repeaters or torches that introduce a one tick delay each time. So maybe we'll do some really neat things with that. Uh, and here's the inverse of those two experiments. This is where retracting a piston makes a connection. I won't go through all the details, but it comes out at two ticks. And here's the most bizarre looking one. Breaking a connection by extending a piston, no delay on either side, the note block does not sound. So zero ticks. Okay, moving on. Uh, 
I wanted to see what happens when things are interacting with blocks that are moving. Not the pistons themselves, but the blocks that they're moving. So I have this line of dirt here, and then a piston on that end, and a piston on this end. Regular pistons. And they're going to push the dirt back and forth, and we'll see what happens when things land on top of that line of dirt. So, uh, to power those two pistons in an alternating way, here's another... Uh, piston creation. I call this a four-cylinder engine because there's four pistons and this dirt block is going to get pushed around rapidly making connections with these redstone repeaters and the torches beneath which power the next piston. Now this is also exceedingly loud so I'm going to turn the volume way down. And when I turn this on and I use a piston to start the connection, you see that block gets pushed around madly and the signal lines flash in a nice pattern. So I connect to the opposite ends of this, one to each piston, and we get the dirt moving back and forth nice and neatly. Okay, so what happens when, for instance, a player stands on this? We've seen this in one of my previous videos, at least I hope you have. If you happen to stand on the seam between two blocks like I am now, you don't fall through. But if you stand on only one block, you fall through and take a little bit of damage. Um, now, I also have this row of dispensers here, and if I toggle them a couple of times to throw out some iron and gold bricks, well, you see they start popping around and jumping a little bit, and eventually they fall through, or if they, like these few here, they land right on a seam between two blocks, they don't fall through. Now, they were popping up and down oddly, and they also did not fall straight down. So for some reason, they fell off to the side. It looks like they're pushed away from the center of the dirt. Because as you see, they're all on the far edge of the dirt. So they're, from this view, they're to the right of center. So they get pushed away from the center of the blocks. So, uh, one other thing. What happens to mobs that fall on moving uh, blocks? So this is Jack the Jumping Wolf when we push him out. He takes a little bit of damage and falls right through. You alright, Jack? Good boy. So, uh, mobs fall through. And there's one other test. This one I may not be able to show you in any reasonable amount of time, but let's give it a shot. Maybe I'll get lucky. If I drop a minecart on there, it sticks, and it's on a seam, but if I gradually push it over, eventually it does fall through. So minecarts can fall right through. Same thing with boats. That needs a much bigger experiment because boats are kind of big, but same thing happens with boats. Okay, one last one of these. If I wire up this, this is a sticky piston, it can't pull the sand downward. That's an interesting little issue, or just behavior. Um, but I can, if I'm lucky, get up on top of this thing. Now, it pushes me around. I had to try very hard to stay up on top of it. Uh, very difficult, but you can sort of stand on that. So that might be an interesting thing to put into some challenge where players are expected to jump on those and move around. Okay, let's shut this thing off. It's just too loud. <coughs> okay, uh, here's a few Minecraft uh, piston bugs. I've shown this in my previous video. This block shouldn't be affecting the piston, but it does. Okay, moving on. Uh, a piston can pull a rail up into one of these weird arches. Also an odd bug. Uh, see another, see my previous video for more details about that. Now here's a new one. This is Andrew BGM uh, who reported this to me. If you have two low rail lines and then one high one and you push the high one with the piston, you end up with these two sloped rail lines and then one that drops off. So what I think happened was the one that was up here was pushed out into midair and this one says, oh, there's one in midair next to me. I have to become a sloped one to connect to it. And then the one that's in midair says, oh, I'm not on a block anymore. And so it destroys itself, and it's floating there. And then this one just remains the way it was. So you end up with this very odd-looking double uh, slope. And you can push a minecart over this if we just throw one on there. It sort of wobbles around. But it is, as you might expect, very brittle. If I just do anything that changes anything near it, the floating rail line breaks. Okay, minor bug, something cute. Okay, I have been wanting to do this for a long time, trying to split the atom using sticky pistons. If we extend the two sticky pistons together, grabbing onto either side of an atom, and then pull them apart, nothing. 
So this kind of makes sense. Considering pistons cannot push or pull a piston that is extended, that's exactly the situation that both of these pistons are in right now. They can't do anything. So unfortunately, no splitting the atom. Uh, another interesting issue is when you have two pistons facing each other, these are two sticky pistons, and when I press any of these buttons, it's going to power both pistons at the same time. Well, one of them wins, and in this case, one of them wins every time, regardless of which button I press. I have had other cases where I pressed the left buttons, and that made the left piston go, and I pushed the right buttons, and I made the right piston go. Very odd behavior. Um, you can trick it a little bit if I press one button, and then at the right time, I push the other, another button. One more try. Well, sometimes... Oh, that's even more interesting. So, yes, weird things do happen. Sometimes the pistons separate. Sometimes I can get the left one to push. Uh, something to watch out for. Uh, and this one was a little disappointing. This is two sticky pistons. I was hoping that if I use this sticky piston to push this one, that the dirt block would get carried along. But sadly, it breaks the connection between the two. Now, that is useful for many other things, um, but it does not chain, the stickiness does not chain along pistons. Okay, last set of tests. We have trying to do damage with pistons. Um, what we have here is a sticky piston facing down, in my little suicide booth, and when I throw the lever, nothing happens. So, you cannot damage yourself with the head of a piston. Now here, I have a sticky piston pushing a dirt block. Doing the same thing, I start taking damage. I'm going to look straight up and knock out that dirt block to save my own life, but yes, you can damage yourself with pistons if you use them to push a block into yourself, or into other players. Now, last thing is other mobs. Here I have another wolf who has volunteered to take a piston to the face, and nothing happens. Smart dog, he volunteered for the right test. This dog, or wolf, not so smart. When I push a block into him... Yes, wolves were harmed in the making of this video. So, uh, you can hurt mobs by pushing blocks into them using pistons. That makes for some really interesting and fun traps. Okay, that's everything. That's my World of Science version 1.1. I will put a download link in the video description so you can try this out for yourself. You may want to try out some of these tests when new versions of Minecraft come out to see if anything has changed. And if you're interested in my videos, please subscribe or follow me on Twitter. I'm at at Tavirider. Thanks for watching.